Hey guys, it's Abel here. We are back for some more, I guess, conspiracy theories. I guess that's what you would call them. Um, for some reason, I just started to Google sh Google search some spooky places in Oregon or in Portland, the Portland, Oregon area. Um, because I thought, like, as much as I'm afraid of literally everything, I would love to take my brothers and my brothers take me and we travel to these places in Oregon and film them. Because I've seen Shane Dawson do shit like this. I've seen Markiplier, their Unis Honest channel, do shit like this. I just find it so cool that there's places, like, just spooky places all over. And I was just, like, in L.A. or, you know, all of that. There's some in Oregon, too, because that would just be fun to do. Um, these are going to be very short because it is Oregon Ghost Stories 31 Famous Haunted Places. So I don't know much about them, so I'm not going to go into explicit, explicit detail because there's not much detail to, to explain. It just explains, like, where it is, um, the location, and... Uh, what happened, I think. Um, I'll also put pictures. So, yeah. I'm gonna do a lot of editing for this one, so let's just get right into it. Did it suddenly get cold in here? What about the tapping at the window? Or, do you hear footsteps off in the distance? These unexplained noises and shifts in the room temperature are sometimes cited as evidence of spirits roaming the halls and auditoriums of Oregon's haunted places. Sometimes they're even accompanied by the sight of children, young men, or old women with spiritual ties to places such as Wallow Hall, at Oregon State University, and a handful of McMinimins in locations. Many of these stories have been debunked. After all, plenty of following sites featured incredibly old buildings that are bound to creak and cloak when it's otherwise silence. But, tis the season, right? Also, I'm going to try and read as slow as I can. Um, I have a whole bunch of these open anyway, so, yeah. Number one, Battery Russell Fort Stevens. The place is in Warrington. The story. This Fort Stevens landmark was built during the Civil War, but it also saw action during World War II when the Japanese fired on it from the Pacific Ocean. Several reports say the ghost of a fallen soldier patrols the ground, although it's not clear to the which conflict of the spirit stems form. Some even reported seeing a man in the 40s era army uniform walking the penomerade in a nearby seaside. Um, so there, hold on, before I get back into it, there are, there are little links to, like, the full story, um, And they're not super long, so I guess I can read those as well. Uh... This place is creepy. Okay, yeah, we're just going to read these as well, because why not? Although it might be a very long video. I'm not too sure. Hold on. Let me let me check another one to see how long it is. Oh yeah, these are most of these are gonna be too long, so we're just gonna go with the original article and then if you want more full stories of it all then I'll do it. So Yeah, okay. The Benson Hotel. The place is in Portland and the story. The Benson is reportedly home to multiple ghosts, the prominent of which the building's namesake. USA Today reports that Benson's ghost is sometimes seen in the meeting rooms, but is mostly known by a penchant of knocking over visitors' drinks. The guy was a pro... This guy was a pro prohibition as they came. A three-year-old boy and woman wearing a turquoise dress also reportedly haunt the building. These places are fucking creepy. Number three, Bush House Museum. The place, Salem, and the story. Eugenia Bush, whose father, Aziel, built the mansion in the late 19th century, reportedly haunts the, reportedly haunts the Salem lo locale by tinkering with the air conditioner and heating systems. If the room feels nice and warm and only to go cold and induce chills, some say that the daughter of the man who once owned the Oregon, sales, who once owned the Oregon statesman still walks the halls.
Number four, Candy Cane Park, the place, La Grande, and the story. After a barmaid was reportedly murdered in Candy Cane Park in the 1800s, her spirit lingered and cautioned those who may wander into the area unprotected. She reportedly haunted the merry-go-rounds until its removal in 2003, now opting to walk through the grounds. It's creepy. Number five, Cathedral Park, the place... Portland, the story. The 1949 murder of a Roosevelt High School student serves as a bias for the myths of the visitors to Cathedral Park. Uh, Cathedral Park, here, here a woman screams at night. The legend is featured in the year's Ghostland, a book hauntings by Pacific University graduate Colin Dickey. And some of these places that I've been to, so it's kind of creepy in itself. Like this is the, this picture right here. This picture right here is the um is the is the Portland Bridge. I've been over that many times. I think I've been to Cathedral Park, maybe. And I went to Roosevelt, so that's even more fun. The Damash State Hospital, the place Wilsonville, the story. Before its demolition in 2005, the hospital, a former mental institution, was reportedly a site foul with strange noises such as dismodied bem dispot dis. Men bodied footsteps and keys jangling throughout its halls. The hospital even had a series of underground tunnels, making it making for an even even creepier legend legacy. McMinimans Edgefield, the place Troutdale, the story. I've been to McMinimans before, so all of this is just kind of creepy. <laughs> If you've been if you've been to a handful of McMinimans, McMinimans, Jesus, chances are you've heard at least one that's haunted. That's certainly the case for anyone who's been to Edgefield, which was once the site of a Multnomah County poor farm. After World War II, it was used as a rehabilitation center before being abandoned and falling into its despair. Some guests have reportedly heard a young woman singing nursery rhymes, while others claim to have seen an apparition of a woman dressed in white walking the grounds. I forgot the number. <laughs> the Egyptian Theater, the place Coos Bay, the story. The Coos Bay venue is reportedly haunted by the ghost of an elderly woman who accordingly, who according to a KDOCKFMDJ, don't know what that means, prowls a larger stage area and can sometimes be seen in the auditorium balcony seats. Oh, there's actual blogs on here. Geezer Grand Hotel, the place, Baker City, the story. Some say they've seen the lights blink on and off on the third floor. Others claim they hear late night parties accompanied by laughter. At least that's what the Oregonian, Oregonian reported in 1993. One of the hotel owners, Barbara Sidway, told the newspaper about some ghoulish sightings in the buildings visitors have been privy to. There are some workers who will not go on the third floor at night, she said. McMinimans Grand Lodge, the place, Forest Grove, the story. According to various comments on the official McMinimans blog entry about the company's so-called ghost logs, visitors at the Grand, Grand Lodge have seen doors open and close on their own and claim a woman named Virginia stocks a facility's second floor. The Hector Head Lighthouse Keeper's House, the place near Florence, the story. Plenty of tales here revolve around the Rue of, of r revolve around that of Rue, the ghost of a woman that's been seen on the property since the 1950s. Originally known as the Grey Lady, Rue is responsible for a phantom footsteps and mysterious opening of the doors and windows reported by guests at the bed and breakfast. Rue is also named after a game of a Ouija, pointed out the letters R U E in search of the ghost's identity. Is it creepy? Highway 101 near Cannon Beach. The place is near Cannon Beach. <laughs> the story. The story of the banished man of Cannon Beach can be found in the book Ghost Critters and Sacred Places of Washington and Oregon. According to the tomb, the banished man is an apparition wrapped in is a uh, wrapped in bloody bandages that loves jumping into passing vehicles on their way to town. Aside from the aside from the book, tales of the bandage man are confined largely to hokey web forums with names such as Chugnut. What does Chugnut got to say? Hmm? 
Wow, there's a whole story on that. Back in 1960. I know two of his brothers. Never heard of a Prince by the Band of Men. If you believe that sort of thing. That's cool. These are cool. Hot Lake Hotel and Hot Springs. The place, La Grande. The story. <laughs> The Hot Lake the Hot Lake Hotel was originally built facing a nearby bluff, not the hot springs that were eventually used for both leisure and to treat physical alignments. At one point the resort's owners, Dr. William Thomas Pry, rebranded the facility as a Hot Lake Satorium sanatorium. The resort was used on and off until 1991 when it was abandoned. It was purchased and restored in 2003, but some say they can still hear the voices of former guests and patients. A piano is once played by Robert E. Lee's wife and was also reportedly played it on its own when it's called when it called the third floor home. McMinniman's Hotel, Oregon. The place? McMinnville. The story. McMinn McMinnville may be known for its many wine-tasting rooms these days, but there is one time when downtown was well known for a pair of haunted locals. Hotel Oregon was one of them. Visitors and former hotel safe staffers swear they've seen doors open and closed and hear voices emitting from rooms without residents. A ghost named John also reportedly stalks the halls. You can tell when he's close when the room suddenly goes cold. Coon Cinema, the place Lebanon. The story. Like so many other old screen theaters in a small town across the country, uh, Lebanon's cool cinema has its share of ghost stories. The most well known is that a young girl who fell to her death from one of the theater's balconies. It's been reported that her image can be sometimes seen in the theater. Some say they've also seen the doors open and close on themselves. Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery, the place Lafayette, the story. The myth surrounding the supposed haunting revolves around the hanging of a witch in the cemetery in the late 1800s. The witch part of the equation has been since debunked, but the clarification is just as gruesome. A convicted, a convicted axe murderer, Richard Maple, has been ha hanged near the jail in 1887. His mother, Anna, was known as a gypsy, but much to the town. Uh, this was somehow interrupted interpreted as her being a witch and in many retellings she portrayed one of the one of the ones portrayed as the one who was hung she died in the southern oregon town of jacksonville in 1910 liberty theater the place astoria the story a ghost named hansen paul reportedly walks the halls of the theater according to the clatsop county Historical Society. He doesn't do much to bother visitors, although sometimes Paul is known to open and close doors at random, clad in his white tuxedo and pan panama hat. Lithina Park, the place Ashland, the story. Although the ghost of Lithina Park hasn't been seen in nearly 20 years, it's reportedly the spirit of a hun hunched back man who was once an employee in the railroad. Ah, oh, there's no page for that one. Malheur Boutte, the place in Malheur Country, the story. The Boutte was reportedly a gathering place for witches and eventually gave way to myths and ghosts, ghostly sightings within to within the extinct volcano's vicinity. Vicinity, according to some, the area is also home to dog-sized imps, but that's probably just a bunch of malarkey, right? Here we go, here's another one. Multnomah Falls, where? East of Portland, the story. This is one of the most photography photographed places in Oregon, but oft visited waterfall was reportedly the site of a Native American woman's sacrifice. According to Portland Monthly, she jumped to jump to her death in order to spare her tribe from coming illnesses. Becoming from a coming illness, some say they can see her apparition in the water, while others claim she returns every winter to visit her grave. I actually would like to know more of that one. Our most haunted destinations in Portland. Oregon Caves Chateau, the place Cave Junction. The story. The story behind the haunting of room 310 of the Chateau's differs 
At the chateau, it differs from the others is that the ghost doesn't disturb anyone staying in her old estates. Instead, Elizabeth, who leaped from her death on the window after she found her newlywed husband cheating on her with a maid, leaves the room whenever somebody checks in to bother the other guests. She can, heard, she can be heard walking the halls, opening and closing doors and rooms, and at times she is said to be making a ruckus in the kitchen. The Oregon Vortex, the place Gold Hill, the story. Although it's reportedly not haunted, the Oregon Vortex is one of the most creepiest places in the state. A team of sci-fi show fact, faked paranormal files sourced the site for any hint of hauntings and came up short. But the crew's horses wouldn't go near the vortex, turning the other direction when the team tried to get the animals near the site. The fact or faked team also failed to find an explanation for the visual tricks the slanted cabin played on for the visitors. Hiddick Mansion, the place, Portland, the story. The iconic mansion has been made for the famous, been made famous the nation over it when stared, starred at the ending location for the sixth season of Amazing Race. But Portlanders know it as the forever home of Henry and Georgina Piddick. Spe specters of the building, two original owners who built the house from top to bottom, reportedly roam the grounds to this day. The Roseland Theater, the place, Oregon, the story. One of the theater's former promoters went missing in the late 1800s. His body is believed to be dumped in the Willamette later, la, ta, whoa, the Willamette River tied down by microphone stands. The ghost of Tim Morigu, Mor, Morayu, still reportedly haunts the venue, angry at the theater's former owner who allegedly ran a counterfeit scam. An altercation between Mario and Lizzie Her and Hilary Hurwitz led to a 21-year-old publicist ultimately demise. This was before the venue we know as Roseland was called Starry Nights, and much before the current management team brought the place, Hurwitz served a 12-year sentence for the murder. Shanghai Tunnels, the place, Portland. If you had a K-12 education in or around Portland, you've heard of the Shanghai Tunnels, where sailors, loggers, and other blue-collar workers were taken under the old town to sold off to sea captains in a search crew of a, of a crew. Ghost Adventures on the Travel Channel once featured the tunnels in an episode. They've also used an episode of Grimm and Leverage. His local historian Michael P. Jones often leads tours underneath the old town. And even though plenty of historians say visitors were definitely abducted and shipped from Portland, the tunnels likely weren't used for that purpose. Silence Bay, the place near Licking City. The story. Yes, we know we've covered a fair number of fair number of beach towns in those slits, but haven't seen anything about the ghost ship. Well, this is where Salitz Bay comes in. As the story goes, one of the many ships found wrecked in the bay still sails just offshore, appearing night to visitors who walk the beach. South Eugene High School, the place, Eugene. The story, South Eugene High School apparently has a square for a ghost. The specter of a former student haunts the auditorium, shutting the lights on and off he sees fit. The boy Robert Tr uh, Turnbull Granke reportedly died when he was changing bulbs for the stage production in 1958. Since then, he's haunted the auditorium, getting particularly or ornery when he hears heavy metal music, as one of the school's teachers told the Oregon Daily Emerald in 1997. Waldo Hall, the place, Oregon State University, Corvallis, the story. According to the Oregon State University Library Archives, the college's first librarian still frequently frequents Waldo Hall. Ida Kidder reportedly lived in the woman's dorm from 1908 from when she died in 1920. Her spirit sometimes seen walking the halls, disappearing when residents turn away and look back. Sorry, I need to drink water. <clears throat> McMinniman's White Eagle Saloon, the place, Portland, the story. A member of the housekeeping crew once claimed that something grabbed her ankle as she cleaned and would not let go until it jumped away. McMinniman's manager claims it can neither conform nor deny these reports, but the restaurant chain has included the above story on its official blog. I can also leave the um the website if you want to go check out the actual blogs. It's all in uh it's all highlighted blue. It's a click there's a clickable link to the full story if you want to go see it. So I'll put the um I'll put the um 
URL in the description if you want to go read them yourself. Because they're going to be, most of them are too long for me to read to make a full video, so. Because this is already at 20 minutes. Wolf Creek Inn. The place, Wolf Creek. The story. Wolf Creek may boast the most famous ghost of Oregon's haunted places. Some say this is a figure resembling Jack Landon, author of Call of the Wild. The writer reportedly finished Valley of the Moon during the stay at Wolf Creek Inn and has been has been seen there since his death in 1916. Another one of hotels... Noteworthy supernatural occupants, the one what is one-eyed Charlotte, a former stagecoach who driver who died in the sight and, and would become the Wolf Creek Inn when she was sixty-seven. I love that there are locations to all of these. That is absolutely insane. But that is all. 31 haunted places in Oregon. I would actually like to go check these out and get a tour of them because that would be amazing. <laughs> Maybe sometime in the future. Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Also, bell is for those which is daily. Um, once again, I'll leave the link down below for the this uh, article if you want to go read some of the full um, stories. Um, and yeah, love you guys, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.